And on this video, we're gonna be taking a look at the Jupitec S1200 solar generator, which is able to output a thousand watts of continuous power, 2000 watts peak. And I'm gonna walk you through its features as well as test it out to see how well it actually performs. As always, I'd like to remind you that I place a link in the description down below to this solar generator in case you wanna get one for yourself. And on the right hand side of the unit, we have two AC outlets and we have four USB ports. Two of them are full size and two of them are USB-C ports and each one is rated at 18 watts each. Moving over towards the left, we have three DC outs, one of them being a cigarette adapter port, which has a nice little dust cover. We also have a separate USB-C port, which is rated at a maximum of 65 watts. And for inputs, we have one DC input and we have one solar input in the form of an Anderson connector. And as far as power output, we know this can output a thousand watts continuously Continuously, so we can potentially power a lot of things off this unit at the same time but we also get a 2000 peak rating or what we call 2000 surge rating. So we can potentially exceed that 1000 watts momentarily, which is helpful when you're starting up a device. Normally it's gonna pull more power than normal and then it's gonna settle down. That's where that peak rating comes in. And as far as battery chemistry, we have lithium iron phosphate, which typically has more charging cycles than lithium ion does. Typically we see about 500 to 800 charging cycles on lithium before the capacity starts to decrease on lithium iron phosphate, we normally get anywhere between 2,500 to 3,500 charging cycles before we see that amount decrease. Now, it is important to point out that lithium ion phosphate is heavier than lithium ion. So this device comes in at 26 pounds of weight, but again, you have the advantage that this is gonna outlast a lithium ion battery solar generator. But now let's talk about recharging this unit and charging times. This unit can be charged in three ways. One of them is with the included wall adapter. The second way is with the included secret lighter adapter if you wanted to charge this off a vehicle. And the third way is with the solar panel, like the one you see back here. Now, it's starting with the AC adapter. This AC adapter that they included is rated at 120 watts. So that means we're gonna be able to charge this unit in roughly about 10 to 12 hours. Same thing with the cigarette lighter adapter. We got 10 amps in here. So about 10 to 12 hours to charge this using the cigarette lighter adapter. And as far as solar charging, this unit has the ability to accept up to 120 watts via that solar input. And the solar panel that you see back there is rated at 120 watts. And in real life test, I was able to get roughly about 91, maybe 92 watts out of that solar panel. So this can potentially be charged using that panel back there somewhere around 13, maybe 14 hours. Well, let's also talk about efficiency. We know that this device is rated at 1,228 watt hours, but realistically, we're not gonna be able to extract all 1,228 watt hours out of it because there's electronics that have to be run on the inside. We're gonna lose some in the conversion from the battery out to the outlets. Now, what I did to test efficiency, I put a low test on this unit and I was able to fully deplete the battery in about 11 hours and I was able to extract 900 178 watt hours out of this unit. So that gives us an efficiency about 80% for DC output. And as far as the AC output, that also has its own efficiency rating. So same thing, I put a load on this device of about 75% of its capacity. So based on this being a thousand watts, I put a load of about 750 watts on it until I fully depleted the battery. And I was able to extract 860 watt hours out of this unit. So that gives us a rough efficiency of about 70% for AC voltage. And as far as how loud this unit is gonna be under heavy load, right now it's at 75% of its capacity. So roughly about 750, maybe 800 watts. Here's a measurement. But now let's talk about the pure sine wave capability of this solar generator, and that is gonna apply to the AC output of this unit. Now, to explain a sine wave, I have connected an oscilloscope directly to my house mains, and you can see that coming out of my receptacle, this is what a good sine wave looks like. Now, it is important to have that good sine wave because most devices that run on AC need to have that sine wave in order to operate. Now, if you do not have a good sine wave, the device can potentially not work 
or can potentially be damaged. Some devices are sensitive to this, some are not so sensitive. So it is better to have a pure sine wave than having to guess if the device is gonna be affected or not by not having a pure sine wave. And now that you know what a good sine wave output looks like, let me show you an example of a bad sine wave. Here's an adapter that I've been using for many years that I can connect to my vehicle and it gives me AC output on the other end. Now I have been able to run devices of this without no issue, but if we connect the oscilloscope to this device, you can see that this is not a good sine wave. Some devices again are more forgiving and are gonna work okay off this adapter, some devices are not gonna work at all, and some devices can potentially be damaged by this adapter because of the lack of a good sine wave. So now let's take a look at the sine wave output of the Jupitec S1200. And for the sine wave test, I have connected my oscilloscope to the Jupitec, and as we can see, it is able to output a pure sine wave, but now let's put a load on it and we should see some noise. Now this particular load is 350 watts, so about 30 something percent of the total capacity of this unit. Now I'm gonna put a higher load on it and see how well it can hold up to the sine wave. Now this second load is about 600, 650 watts, so a little bit more than 50% and it is able to hold the sine wave. And finally, let's see how well it holds up under full load. 350 watts, an additional 600. So we're now pulling a thousand watts or 950 and it is holding up a good sine wave. But let's go back to the front of the unit and let's talk about these buttons right here. As you can see, we can turn on individual sections of the solar generator. Right now, I have turned on the DC output and I can also turn that off. Same thing, we can do that with the USB ports and we can also do that independently for the AC output. Now, the front one right here, display, comes on when I press the light button and it's gonna stay on or I can run the unit with the display off if desired. Notice I'm gonna turn on the DC output and I can turn off the display and I, while still getting output of this unit, which is nice if you don't want something to bother you at night with a bright display. But you also might have noticed that this device has two additional buttons and those are for lights that are built in on the side of the unit. The one on the right hand side turns on a spotlight. The one on the left hand side turns on a floodlight. And the solar generator also supports an app which is available for Android and Apple devices. And if we take a look at the app, it shows us the amount of charge left in percentage, but also in hours and minutes left. We can also turn on the individual sections of the solar generator using the app and we can also turn on each one of the lights independently like I showed you earlier directly from the app. So hopefully this video helped you decide if this is the right solar generator for you or not and what the important features to look for when considering a solar generator. So I'll put a link in the description down below to this unit in case you want to get one for yourself including a link to the solar panel that you see back there which actually comes in in this nice little carrying case which is convenient so I can fold it and store it away when I'm not using it. And if you guys have any other questions regarding the Jupitec S1200 solar generator, please put that in the comments down below. If you find any part of this video helpful, hit the thumbs up button to support the channel and stay tuned as I have a lot more reviews coming up. Thank you guys for watching and as always, I'll see you on the next one.